All right, we are back. I'm talking with David Hogg, who is one of the leaders of the new student movement that is called Never Again. These are the students who survived the massacre at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. I'm now also joined by Ryan Deitch, another classmate and friend of David's, uh, who was kind enough to at the last minute <laughs> join us as well. And I'll, I'll also give my condolences to you on the loss of your friend. This is a, a trauma, you know, that we we have the people who are in the military have to go through and deal with and be treated and get mental health counseling for. Have you guys been able to access uh, counseling services in the wake of what you went through? Uh, we've had plenty of access to counseling services. There are grief counselors all throughout Parkland and going through our school. Uh, but frankly, we don't have enough time to deal with the grief just like that. We have to take action. We have to continue to speak out with people yeah. because we really we started this grassroots movement where we're going. I I've personally been pushing face-to-face -face contact mm -hmm. with anybody that we can get a hold of, with mm -hmm. any representatives, with even just regular people. Like when we went to Tallahassee this past week, yep. we met with uh, Leon High School and everyone out there, they were just such a huge help. They were all really supportive and I just met with people outside. I stayed with them. I spoke to them yeah. because everyone's just a person in this. Everyone yeah. is equal and we all just have to stand up and say we don't want to take this anymore. Well, you had some face-to-face -face contact with Marco Rubio. Senator Marco Rubio showed up to the CNN town hall. You had an interaction with him. I'm not sure if we have the video of that, but we have. Okay, let's play that. When I was in fifth grade, I had to hide in a closet, in a, in a bathroom for three, for three hours and just waiting with my teacher and nearly 20 other kids to see that just because a shooter has come to our town. Now, seven years later, I'm in a closet with 19 other kids waiting, fearing for my own life. Why do we have to be the ones to do this? Why do we have to speak out to the Capitol? Why do we have to march on Washington just to save innocent lives? We don't have his answer, but were you satisfied with the response you got? Uh, I was satisfied that he showed up to the town hall. I was satisfied to meet with Marco Rubio face to face mm -hmm. as somebody that I've followed for years. But uh, frankly, that was a sad answer to see from a politician, but it is a political answer. What was his answer? Uh, it just was so much double talk. I can't even remember it at this yeah. point. He just kept going back and forth. Marco yeah. Rubio, just like so many other politicians, are professional sidesteppers when it comes to questions. As a journalist, you of all people know this. When you ask a politician a question, even if it's a yes or no question, like, yeah. will you take money from these child murderers at the NRA? Mm -hmm. They can't even answer yes or no. And that's the most disgusting part. Like when Cameron Caskey asked if Marco Rubio would take donations from the NRA, yeah. he would not say just yes or no. He said, Yes, he would, in a very long answer, trying to distract the American public. Yeah, and he also um, has said that he is not for uh, banning assault rifles. He's not for, uh, you know, he won't really step away from the NRA, but a lot of people are. Uh, I want to ask you guys about one of the big outgrowths of the movement that you all have started, you and your classmates have started, has been a boycott of the NRA or dropping the NRA by a lot of companies. We put up a few of them there, Alamo, True Car, Enterprise, um, Hertz, uh, Wyndham, and they had these deals where people who are NRA members could get discounts with them, those are going away. Um, you think that this boycott movement, um, David, is the way to, to go? Well, I think it's one of the many ways to go. But what I'd like to acknowledge and acknowledge to the people out there is FedEx still has not dropped their deal with the NRA. The CEO is one of the biggest don donors to the NRA, and we have to take care of them. And as a result, um, if they aren't going to, we're going to have to take action as the consumers because we have the power in a business just like we have the power in our democracy. One of the things about Florida um, that, 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 that matters to the state, and I'll ask both of you this, I'll start with you, Ryan, is it is a tourism state. And it's been now on the international stage as a state where kids don't feel safe going to school. Um, do you think that the fear of politicians of Florida's image as a tourism destination could also push people to take your side, which is the rational I, side in the gun I, debate. I, I frankly think, like, as far as tourism goes, we still have Disney World. People are still going to be coming there, mm -hmm. like, whether they feel safe or not. But frankly, that this is beyond Florida. This is yeah. the nation as a whole. Florida is definitely where we started, but it's everywhere that these guns are out there on the streets, that people who may be unstable are able to get it just as anybody else. And even though there have been things placed, like the age limit that they are talking about, or the mm -hmm. bump stocks, they are just steps. They are just single actions to this really long, just problem that has been facing our country and we're, we're not out here saying that we want to take guns. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take someone's gun if they want it, but they need to deserve it. Yeah, And that's why you're marching on Washington. 
in part, yeah. And I also think it's important, but going back to the last question really quick, mm -hmm. I think it's important for people to realize that a lot of these Florida politicians won't meet with us. Only one Republican lawmaker met with us when we went to Tallahassee. That screams volumes because they want the American public to forget. They want them to move on from this session, which is the last one of this year, and have them get reelected through name recognition and the incumbency advantage of that. They want us to forget, and we're not going to because we're not going to let that happen. We're going to find justice for our 17 friends and the thousands of others that can and will continue to die. But because they won't listen to us, we're going to have to make sure that we take control of some of the state's economy and make sure that these politicians are lobbied by these businesses to take some action because they certainly are doing it with us. Yeah, it's a huge spring break destination too, Florida, and, and yeah. people need to feel safe where they are. There have been a few people who've attacked you guys. Um, David Clark, who is no longer a sheriff because someone died in his jail and there were other scandals that sort of forced him out of uh, his role in Milwaukee, big time uh, right wing activist and Trump um, supporter, tweeted the well organized effort by Florida school students demanding gun control has all caps George Soros fingerprints all over it. It's similar to how he hijacked and exploited black people's emotion regarding police use of force. You know, ironic for him to tweet that. And the cop-hating Black Lives Matter movement. What do you make of that? You disgust me, honestly. Just, just it, with... What? Seriously. We had friends that died there, and you're trying to make this about you? You are absolutely disgusting, and you should be out there taking action because... We are, we are trying as hard as we can here, and we don't deserve to be attacked by adults. We're literally teenagers, and the fact that we have to stand up and take action, and the fact that we have to be up here speaking out for this because our politicians won't, because mm -hmm. they just want to be reelected, screams testaments to how broken this democracy is. Yeah, not to mention Donald Trump Jr., son of the president, liking a tweet um, calling you guys crisis actors. It, it's just ridiculous to all those people who don't think this is real, and if you don't think it's real, you just have to stand out there at those memorials. The other day, I spent personally about four hours either at the school or at Pine Trails Park just mm -hmm. in silence not speaking to anybody but the people that were there taking their time to be there and you have to see their faces because it is not just the politicians that can do something here it's the people and the people have to stand up and won't be silenced. Let's talk about the march that you guys uh, are planned on March 24th what can people expect uh, to see from it and what do you want the outcome of it to be? I want a major rehaul of everybody that's in our current House of Representatives to be the outcome of this, honestly. Because so many of them, because it's a Republican-controlled House, Senate, and Executive Branch, so many of these people are supported by the NRA. I'm not saying Democrats aren't either. There is a, a small amount of Democrats that are, sure. but a majority of the NRA donations go to people like Marco Rubio, who, mind you, I, I believe still has an A or an A-plus rating from the NRA. Mm -hmm. That screams volumes about how these people refuse to listen to us and just want to listen to these donors. because. We as American citizens aren't getting up and voting, but these special interest groups are taking our voices as a result, and they're cho they have American democracy yeah. in a chokehold as a result. How old are you, Ryan? I am 18 years You're old. You're 18, so you are old enough to vote. I can vote. Is, is it, will this become the voting issue for you? Because, you know, the issue has been that for people who are, um, you know, um, gun enthusiasts or fetishists, some might say, they will vote only on this issue. Is this something that is going to be a voting issue top of mind? Um, clearly it, for you, but do you think for your generation? It definitely is a big issue that is going to be on the table at this midterm election, mm -hmm. but it is not the only issue, and I can't decide what I have to feel about a politician because of just this only issue. If somebody supports gun control but doesn't support something else that's good for the people, mm -hmm. I can't just openly support them because this is not a Democrat issue. This is not a Republican issue. This is a people issue, and I do not want to see more graves. I don't want to have to bury another friend. I don't want to have somebody else bury another friend. Yeah. We just have to stand up. We have to keep going. And I just want to meet face to face with anybody that I can. If they say no to meeting us, we're just going to march to their doorstep. You know, sometimes kids are smarter than adults. A lot of times kids are smarter than adults. You guys are, are proof positive of that. Thank you guys so much for doing this. David Hogg, thank you very much. Ryan uh, Daichu, we recruited <laughs> at the last minute and put you thank on you. TV. You guys are great. You're really inspiring. You guys are leading the country. Uh, we are following you. Just, I, I just want people to know, don't forget about this. These politicians want that. Get out there and vote during midterms. I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican. Just get out there and vote. Thank you very much. I appreciate you guys. Thank you thank so much. You. Thank you guys so much. All right, coming up, more Joy. You guys are awesome. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.